Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Wallace. In today's video, we'll be looking at electricity. This is going to be a very short video and we'll basically just look at uh, what electricity is. We shall discuss voltage, current and also resistance of a conductor. I shall do other videos, follow-up videos that we will discuss and go into too much detail. Let's go ahead and dive into this lesson. Alright, so what is electricity? Electricity is movement of electrons. Okay, electricity is movement of charge. Charge is moving, then we have electricity. If charge is not moving, then we do not have electricity. Electricity has to do with movement of charge or movement of electrons, like I like to put it. Now, before we go into more detail about this, bear in mind that there are two types of electricity. There is the direct current, and then there is alternating current. Okay, which they call LC, direct current is called DC. Uh, we shall not go into details about direct current, alternating current, what is the difference of those two. But for now, just know that there are two types of electricity. It is still electricity, but there is the DC electricity, and also there is the AC electricity. Uh, direct current means it is flowing in one direction. Alternating current means it is changing directions, but uh, for the detailed explanation of that, we shall do it in other videos to come. So as electrons are moving or as charge is moving, the first thing in electricity that we need to keep in mind is that there is how much electrons are moving and that we shall call current. How much electrons, the amount, amount of charge flowing per unit time the amount of charge flowing per unit time is called current electrons are moving how many electrons how much electrons are moving that is current we cannot have electricity without knowing how many electrons are moving or how much electrons are moving. Current will be measured in a unit amperes. In short, you can call it amps. You'll be using the letter A. The symbol in your calculations, in your formula, you'll be using the symbol I for current. So whenever we see the, this symbol I, it will represent current okay then the next thing that we shall encounter or that we need to keep in mind under electricity is that these electrons that are moving are influenced by something there is something that is causing them to move and that influence is what is called voltage okay so voltage basically is the electrical influence or the influence uh influence Okay, so basically, voltage is the electrical influence that causes electric charge to move. And voltage will be measured in a unit volts. You'll be using the symbol V. Even in your calculations, you'll be using the symbol V. So voltage is basically the influence. What is causing this movement to take place? What is pushing the charge? That is the voltage. I don't want to say it is the pressure or I don't want to say it is the force because in science, when we say pressure, the units should be pascals. If we say force, the units should be newtons. So I just want to call it an influence that is causing this movement of electrons and we shall call that uh, voltage. I don't want to say also the energy because energy will now be in joules and under electricity we can also calculate for the electrical energy. So I just I just want to use this word to say influence that causes the movement of the electric charge. So that is voltage. Keep in mind that with electricity 
there is movement that is taking place movement of electrons so for the electrons to move there has to be something that is causing that those electrons to move and that influence is what is called voltage and voltage is called is measured voltage is measured in volts and the symbol that you use is v so we cannot have electricity without voltage the influence that is causing this movement and at the same time we cannot have electricity without current how many how much charge is flowing per unit time so with electricity these two voltage voltage and current cannot be separated as long as we have electricity then it means we should have voltage and we should have current we cannot separate those two all right so let's just keep that in mind as long as there is electricity voltage current should always be there how do we no voltage voltage the unit for voltage is volts the unit for current is amps or amperes all right then the next thing that we look at or that we encounter under electricity or under movement of charge is what is known as resistance okay resistance as the name uh, says it all resistance is opposition resistance is opposition to the flow of current through a conductor so resistance basically it is opposing it resists resistance resists this movement it is opposing the movement of charge so this guy is actually uh, fighting back the movement that is trying to take place between these two voltage is pushing the current is trying to move but resistance is opposing resistance is measured in a unit ohms you shall represent this uh, using a greek symbol and the symbol in our calculation will be r so every time we calculate the unit is ohms represented by this Greek symbol but in our formula we shall use r as the symbol in our formula for voltage in our formula representing voltage it will be v in our formula representing current it will be i but the unit keep in mind everything that we learn we have to know the unit and we have to give the correct unit after we calculate All right, so having learned about current, we said current is represented by the symbol I. We also have learned voltage. Voltage, the influence that is causing the electrons to move. We've also learned uh, resistance. Resistance, we are saying, uh, is represented by R. The units and these are not the units these are just the symbols that we represent in our formula when we calculate the units for current is amps we are using the letter a for volts volts it's still voltage is still v with resistance we are using that greek symbol uh, for resistance so these are the units these are the symbols so the relationship between these three like we said is that resistance opposes the movement is uh, summarized in two what is known as Ohm's Ohm's law. Ohm's law gives you a gateway into understanding what electricity is. If we forget what Ohm's law is, then we might as well forget about this topic and move on to the others. So Ohm's law states that the amount of current flowing in a circuit is direct, directly proportional to the voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance. That is Ohm's law. Alright, so basically that is what Ohm's law is. 
Ohm's law states that the amount of current, the amount of current flowing in a circuit is directly proportional to the applied voltage. So there is a direct relationship with the amount of current that will flow based on how much uh, influence is pushing that uh, current or those electrons to flow. So the amount of current that will flow is based on how much influence, which is the voltage. So the amount of current that is flowing is directly proportional to the applied voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance. So inversely proportional means that when the resistance increases, then the current is going to reduce because resistance is opposing. It is resisting the movement of this. So basically Ohm's law is summarized into this formula. Current is direct proportion to the voltage, applied voltage over or inversely proportion to the resistance. The amount of current flowing in a circuit is direct proportion to the voltage and inversely proportion to the resistance. This formula gives us a gateway into understanding what electricity is. You can say, you can make V the subject of the formula and say voltage is equal to current times resistance. However, this is not what Ohm's law says. Ohm's law talks about the current. Do not state Ohm's law using the voltage and you say voltage is directly proportional to the product of current and resistance. When we state Ohm's law, the correct uh, statement of Ohm's law is talking about the current being directly proportional to the voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance. This is what you will find in your formula page or in other uh, calculations that you, you might be calculating for the voltage. You might also again calculate for the resistance using the same one. You play around, you make uh, resistance the subject of the formula, you find that V uh, divided by I will give us our current. And it is also very important that you remember your units for each of the items that we are calculating in this formula. Here's a question. Calculate the resistivity of a conductor 10 kilometers long with a resistance of 20 ohms and diameter of 10 millimeters. So this question is asking us to calculate the resistivity the length is 10 kilometers. Uh, the diameter is 10 millimeters. So the formula for resistance of a conductor, which is given as this. Remember what we said? The resistance is directly proportional to the the type of material, this represents the type of material times the length. This is our length there. Then inversely proportion to the cross-sectional area. In this information that we have been given, we are not given our area. So we might as well start by calculating for area. So since they have said it's a diameter, which means it's a, it's a, round, uh, it's a round conductor. This is our diameter there. Area of a circle is equals to pi d square over 4. So we take our pi, usually I just like to use pi as pi, times our diameter which is 10. Now this 10 is in millimeters. Remember our area, this area should be in meters, square meters, this area should be in square meters. The length should be in meters, we've been given in kilometers our answer will be in ohms meters. So this 10 millimeters, millimeters to the power minus three, then we square that diameter, then we divide it by four. Okay, this gives me 78.53 or 5398 times 10 to the power minus six. These are now square meters. Then we'll take this value and place it on our area. So now we can finally use this formula. In this formula, we have our resistance, 20 ohms. We have our length. We, have, we now have our, our area. What we are solving for is the resistivity. You can throw everything in there or you can make 
uh, resistivity the subject of the formula. Uh, if we say resistivity the subject of the formula, this changes to be your resistance times your area over your length. So you just now substitute our resistance, which is 20. We multiply it by our area. I'm trying as much not to round off. 5, 3, 9, you can as well round off maybe 5, 4, 8, don't forget the exponent times 10 to the power minus. Then over or divided by our length, which is 10 kilometers. Very important. Kilometers means a thousand. Then our resistance. Yeah, this gives us 157.0. Point zero seven nine times 10 to the power negative 9. Now the unit for this is ohm meters. Okay, so very important that we give this a correct unit.